Former President Donald Trump in federal court just blocks from the U.S. Capitol, attacked by some of his supporters on January 6th. Mr. Trump pleading not guilty to four felony charges, stemming from what prosecutors say was a criminal scheme to overturn the 2020 election, including conspiracy to defraud the United States. Following his arraignment, the 2024 Republican frontrunner claimed the charges against him are designed to damage his campaign. This is a persecution of a political opponent. This was never supposed to happen in America. But for the most part, the former president was treated like any other criminal defendant. He was processed and fingerprinted, but no mugshot was taken. Inside the courtroom, Mr. Trump and his attorneys sat just steps away from special counsel Jack Smith. He was released on the condition he not communicate with witnesses about the case unless attorneys are present. The judge also warning Mr. Trump that it would be a crime to influence the jury and to threaten or retaliate against witnesses or any other person who may have information about the case. The judge adding, quote, if you fail to comply with any of the conditions of your release, a warrant may be issued for your arrest. That somewhat unusual warning notable because of Mr. Trump's history of verbally attacking witnesses, prosecutors and judges involved in other criminal and civil proceedings he's faced. The range Jack Smith and the DOJ will probably bring another case. Mr. Trump's attorneys say they'll fight against a speedy trial. This is a fast-moving railroad without any concern for justice. Despite his dominance in the 2024 Republican primary, the former president is facing at least three trials in the coming year, including in the Mar-a-Lago classified documents case. Aide Walt Nauta, his co-defendant in that case, at his side yesterday in Washington, with a possible fourth indictment looming in Georgia this month, where the Fulton County DA is investigating Mr. Trump's alleged attempts to overturn President Biden's 2020 victory in that state. The next hearing in this case will come on August 28th, at which point the judge hopes to set a trial date. Prosecutors say they want to move quickly. Mr. Trump's defense team signaling they'll push for a delay. Savannah. All right, Garrett, thank you very much. Let's bring in our senior legal correspondent, Laura Jarrett, and NBC's chief White House correspondent, Kristen Walker. Good morning to both of you. Laura, let's talk about that very issue that Garrett just raised, which is the timing mm. of the trial. Obviously, the defense lawyers are already saying, we need more time. We got to look at this discovery. Come on, we have so much to go through. When do you think, realistically, this trial date will be set and why is that such an important issue in this case? So this is where it's going to be key to watch the judge. She's going to be the one who's in the driver's seat, and she's already signaling she wants to move fast. Mr. Trump didn't even appear in front of the child, child judge, Judge Trupton, you see on your screen there. He didn't appear before her yesterday, but she's already made it clear to the magistrate she wants to set a trial date at that August 28th hearing, and I think that signals that she's going to move fast, and she could set it even before the one that's set for May. In his other classified documents case, she could jump ahead and actually set it for early next year before that case. Well, what are Donald Trump's legal rights here? Because he has a right to a speedy trial, yeah. but he also has a right to look at discovery and not be rushed into it. So how do those two factors play out? Well, this is going to be sort of up to her discretion. There's no firm timely timeline on when exactly uh, she has to set the trial, but I could see her sort of split the baby and say, you don't get to just be able to, you know, prolong it forever, but she might not give the government 70 days. I think that would be pushing it. Another issue issue is that of witnesses, the usual admonitions at the arraignment, don't talk to witnesses, right. you can't try to influence jurors, and we, we hear that typically at arraignments, something like that. How fascinating, though, because Donald Trump came yesterday with two potential witnesses traveling with him, Jason Miller, his senior advisor, who who's mentioned not by name, but whose conduct is in the indictment, yes. and another traveling aide who some people feel may be in the indictment as well. And he's now under an order not to talk to those witnesses about the case at all. And the reason for that is that so that you can't be accused of colluding on the testimony. And he was told, if you break that order, you can be subject to arrest. So it's quite serious. And obviously, he's traveling with Walt Nada, a co-defendant, in his other case. And so they're all inextricably linked. Yeah, that's who was holding the umbrella yes. yesterday, a co-defendant in the mar yeah. case. Yes. So let's talk about the politics of mm -hmm. this. And, I mean, Donald Trump, in the latest polls I've seen, I mean, is crushing the competition. It's not even close. So how does this play? He's crushing the competition, Savannah. And there's a new poll out today it, from Iowa, a New York Times, Siena poll, which shows that he's up 44 to 20 percent over Ron DeSantis, his closest GOP rival. Look, we are seeing with each new indictment, he's only solidifying his lead. 
What are we watching for? The tone of these candidates. You have candidates like Chris Christie, Asa Hutchinson, Will Hurd taking the gloves off, but really they're the only ones. Former Vice President Mike Pence started to sharpen his tone this week, but he's barely registering in the polls right now. He doesn't qualify for the debate, which is less than three weeks away, by the way. Nikki Haley yesterday said, I don't want to be talking about this. I want to be focused on the issues. Why is that significant? Think about how we usually cover primary races. Every nuance, every misstep on the campaign trail becomes an issue. Not here. They are literally ignoring the elephant in the room. I spoke to a top GOP lawmaker who said, who doesn't want to see Trump as the nominee, who said, we need to see one of two things. These candidates either need to start dropping out or speaking from the same chorus book and condemning or at least making the argument to voters that someone with this many indictments has too much baggage to govern. Meanwhile, there's this political calendar. In 19 days is the first debate. I might add the former president, Donald Trump, says it, right now it doesn't look like he's going to come. And why should he? If you're, if, I mean, as a political right. analysis, why would you go when you're crushing your competition? Strategically speaking, it doesn't make much sense. I spoke to an aide close to him who reiterated that, Savannah, saying, no, he still does not plan to attend. Look at this calendar. You you see the ways in which those court dates dovetail with key dates on the campaign trail. What does that do? That keeps the spotlight on Donald Trump. It makes it that much harder for his Republican rivals to break through. And that's exactly what we're trying, they're trying to do right now. This goes back to the point that Laura is making, which is that his legal team is signaling they want to run out the clock. They want this to last as long as possible. Notably, there is a new poll that shows about 45 percent of Republican voters would not support him if he were convicted. But will that happen before they get a chance to go to the polls? That remains a big question. And the bottom line on this issue of timing because it is critical here. It's up to the judge. Totally. Up to the yep. Trump appointed judge in Florida for timing, up to the Obama appointed judge in Washington for timing, and then of course we have a New York case going as well. Both random assignments. Random assignments. Yes. They spin the wheel, and, and that's how you get yep. your judge. And inside Trump world, Savannah, there is a sense that if the president can make it to the general election, to election day, and win, that all of this will potentially fade away. Okay. Laura and Kristen, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.